Fit for Life Radio, episode number 147. 150 is going to feel good. A little milestone 150. number. 150. Why is that? Yeah. Why does it's that just matter? Round, it's just a round number. It just feels, it's a yeah. good number. It's like when people want to go to 12 reps, 15 reps. Mm-hmm. It just feels right. As always, Gary here. Will here. And today we're going to be talking about intermittent fasting. One of our favorite <laughs> topics. What intermittent fasting, what it is, what it isn't. What it do, what it don't. Climbing the charts probably is one of the most common topics because it's but God, be, something people ask about the most. Then people just need to hear it over and over. And something they're confused about the most. And, and I think sometimes people want it to be the answer. Mm-hmm. You know, you want something... I don't know, simple to be the answer or something easier. So, yeah. And, and it there, there's a somewhat extreme nature to it, right? So I think people kind of hold out hope. Well, if this is harder, if I have more suffering, uh, then it must equal more Or because like this is, this is different and then there's this, oh, well, fasting's attached to it. Mm-hmm. And there, there's some miracle in fasting for part of your day. Yeah. You know, that that is really what, you know, makes you lose your weight. And then you have people that do, you know, act like it is the answer and, you know, they're responsible for the mismessaging and things like that and all the misunderstandings that people have. Yeah. Um, so, so let's start with, you know, there's different types of intermittent fasting. There's the common one, which most people refer probably thinking of, which is like um, along the lines of like the 16-8. So yeah. where you like have a eating window of eight hours and then you fast for 16. So you would eat from noon to 8 PM and then, you know, not eat the rest of the time. There's like alternate day fasting. So where you don't eat for an entire day and eat the other day, there's probably, you know, there's like longer fast than that. So, um, but, but basically like you're eating for a period and then you're not eating for a period is basically what that is. So for one, realize if you sleep at all, I mean, there's some form of fasting. Everybody right? does like, some form of intermittent if you, fasting. If you eat right when you wake up and eat right before you go to bed and you sleep for five hours, well, there's f- you could technically say that's five hours of intermittent fasting, right? Okay, so now, yes, if you're eating from dawn to dusk all throughout the day, that's more chances to consume more calories. Yeah. So then, ultimately, intermittent fasting is just a, a form, a method, a way to help control your caloric intake, right? And if it's a way that you enjoy and is sustainable and helps control your caloric intake, that is great. Great, do it. Outside of that, there's no... Um, there's no extra benefit. There's really no no extra benefits, right? When cal- Again, when calories are equated, right? Meaning if you eat 4,000 calories a day, eating all throughout the day or you eat 4,000 calories a day in a three hour window and intermittent fasting the rest of the time. It doesn't matter. And, and that 4,000 calories is putting you in a surplus and you do it over time and it starts to cause these problems. Like th- th- they're like equal problems. Yeah. Equal, same thing. Now, if you start eating 1,800 calories a day and now all of a sudden you start having, uh, losing weight, losing body fat, your blood pressure improves, your energy improves, your sleep improves. Now, whether you did that in six meals a day or, or with a huge intermittent fasting window, those benefits are not like specific to the intermittent fasting. They are specific to the, the common to the caloric deficit. Yeah, to just eating less food. Now, again, if you yeah, which I totally would get if you're eating eight times a day, well, you, you're eating more often. You're giving yourself more opportunities to eat. Right. So for some people, well, then they end up eating more. Yeah. Right. So, yes. So, again, the intermittent fasting can be a tool to help co- control the caloric intake. But understand the quote unquote magic or benefits are related <clears throat> to the caloric intake. Right. Yeah. So that is the principle. Intermittent fasting is just a method. Right. So then when you find someone who's like writing a book and it's the wonders of intermittent fasting and everything, you know, it becomes this like religious experience of like this improves everything. <laughs> and this is the only way to do it for for total health and longevity. Yeah. Go, go. you know, OK, you know, d- this is probably not the best book to read. Yeah. Right. 
Um, and and then what happens in today's world is yeah we're looking everyone we're look we want a quick fit like we want an answer. So and just like having a hard rule like well you only eat eight hours a day is easier for a lot of people you mm-hmm. know than addressing all the other things that might be causing them to eat a little bit more. Yep. So and like yeah we want that hope. Yeah, you know, I mean, I don't know who wouldn't want it to be easier. Like, okay, so I don't have to change anything I eat. Just skip breakfast. Mm-hmm. And don't don't eat. Force myself to do that and then get to these other times. And but and yeah, you know what? For some people, it works and they do get in the calorie deficit. It does control some people. And we they sat in our chairs and mm-hmm. I, I did intermittent fasting and I gained weight. That's because intermittent fasting, <laughs> again, what happens is they may skip those meals. Now they're starving. And they just go ham. Yeah, then they binge and actually end up eating more. Realize if you ate 4,000 calories in a, you know, six hour eating window and didn't eat the rest of the time, you, you will gain weight. If you ate, you know, in general, say 1,600 calories, but with all these meals spread out throughout the day, you would lose weight. Yeah. Right. That's so th- there's no magic when it comes to, to the weight loss with intermittent fasting. And I think that's a misunderstanding. I think sometimes people hear part of the information sometimes or they have somebody that's just spouting wrong information that says like oh well if you intermittent fast you can eat as Mm -hmm. much as you want you know and then people hear that they're like this sounds great i can do whatever i want and it's just it it doesn't work that way like the that that alone makes it seem like there is magic in the fast and then the problem is yeah people will do it and get results which you can like we said if it helps control your caloric intake but maybe that and they don't understand or know those that principle yeah, they and, don't know why in those mechanisms but they know that they did intermittent fasting and it worked and then they want to go preach to the mountain yeah, right? shout it from the rooftops when the reality is that it's not going to end up being the case for everyone else and if you understand the underlying principle of why it worked then you know like hey not everyone has to do no intermittent fasting right um and if you notice some of the bigger names and experts and people who have touted it it started walking back a little or bit walking back and like oh i, I added breakfast back in right? and i feel and good and that you know because now what does happen too look there's there's push and pull with everything right so intermittent fasting skipping eating is stressful on the body right so now if you factor in a lot of other stress in your life and high activity and things like that um you may start having negative hormonal type is- issues yeah. from pushing your fasting too far right So again, it's very context dependent and individual, you know, some people are wired to be cortisol and stress driven, you know, well, you know what, skipping meals probably isn't going to be helpful to that. No. Right. So now they may just increase that, you know, now other people are super chill, right? They actually may, yeah, may struggle, like it may be good to add that little stress, right? To get some uh, fight or flight. And And some people like will say like, oh, I feel a little more like alert when I intermittent Mm -hmm. fast or focused and what that really is is that cortisol little bit of a stress response of like getting a little bit of cortisol and probably some adrenaline from not eating and to kind of help wrap your brain around it you know so when we're sleeping we eventually wake up right yeah well what what makes us wake up you know so typically if we have a good circadian clock you know very routine we're on point like our body knows around this time and we have like a cortisol like our body wakes us with cortisol mm-hmm. you know so there'll be a little bit of a spike at the beginning of the day and yeah that's why we wake up you know that's how we wake up part of it well if you intermittent fast don't eat for a while it we we get like will said we can start okay our body can start getting in a kind of stressful state we feel more alert because our body is pumping cortisol pumping adrenaline um and we mistake that yeah for like oh i'm so alert and so focused well yes because now our body's like you're in a little fight or flight mode fight right or flight now. mode and yeah the time or place for that but now if that starts to be perpetual well imagine yeah every single day you start your day in fight or flight mm-hmm. that's and, gonna and, start to have negative and consequences stay there for a long time and you are someone who typically lives there yeah like, like if you are a higher and you know anxiety person or you're a little more prone to be stressed or whatever you want to um, classify it as that might not be the best move for you mm-hmm. but like gary said if if you're somebody who's the opposite like yeah you don't get stressed very easy you are not a very anxious person you kind of you know live in more of a parasympathetic state you might actually find that that 
helps you feel okay. You know, you get a little bit of a spike in alertness, but it doesn't, you know, push you over the edge stress wise. You might operate completely fine there. Yep. Um, and what happens too, like when we're in that stress state a lot, you know, and our cortisol is, you know, high at times that it shouldn't be like that leads us to eat more like highly processed foods. Cause we're, you know, have this drive for, for calories. Um, so that can lead to overeating as well. Yep. Uh, when you're kind of living in that state. Yeah. So again, and not, not to completely bash it. No. And then some people, they feel fine. And again, it helps them control their calories, but tons and tons of analysis studies, you know, over and over have shown that there's just not much separation between calorie restriction and intermittent fasting. Right. So you don't have to, you don't want to put, put it on this pedestal. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, now, I would actually encourage most people to, hey, try it. Yeah. See, see if it works, right? See how you feel. But the reality is you, you should be taking like, what's my total intake? So say whatever for someone, the goal is 2,000 calories. And then you're really just finding, hey, what's the best way that can help me maintain consuming, say, this 2,000 calorie intake, right? What does that look like? Because we have to eat, right? So yeah, do we eat all day? Do we just eat two meals? Do we do we intermittent fast? Like... Yeah, you want to find the structure. You want to experiment and see what do I enjoy the most? What can I stick with? What makes me feel the best, right? So that is the context. I would encourage people to try intermittent yeah, give fasting. Yeah, give it a go, but go in with the thought that this might just this help is, me. Yeah, and that this is a method, not a principle. Yeah. Yeah, that's the hard thing because, again, people want it to be magic. Mm-hmm. And it's just not. And, and you, if you want to see the issues where you can roll – then within, okay, now let's, if we dive into the intermittent fasting world of people who are like, this is the way, well, now there's tons of disagreement mm-hmm. between those people in their own quote unquote religion, right? Where they're like, so you can break down to time restricted feeding, right? So now people are arguing, should your eating window, so say we're going with that eight hour eating window, should it be from 12 to eight? If you know me, you know, I'm always on the run up early and home late. So having a three hour morning routine isn't really in the cards for me. What is in the cards is AG1. It's a fast way to get vitamins and minerals I need to perform. I first gave AG1 a try because I wanted a single solution that helps support my entire body by filling in nutrient gaps and simplifying my morning routine. Since drinking AG1 daily, I've always felt strong and energized and ready to attack the day. Not only does AG1 deliver my daily dose of vitamins, minerals, pre and probiotics, and more, it's a powerful, healthy habit that's also powerfully simple. It's one scoop mixed in water once a day and every day. I know that AG1 is giving my body high quality nutrition. Every batch of AG1 goes through a rigorous testing process so you know that it's safe. And AG1 ingredients are sourced for absorption, potency, and nutrition density. AG1 is a supplement that I trust to provide the support my body needs daily, and that's why I'm excited to welcome them as a new partner. Here is your chance to start every day this season with a gift to yourself. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase exclusively at drinkag1.com slash provengrit. That's drinkag1.com slash proven grit. Check it out. If you know me, you know I'm always on the run, up early and home late. So having a three-hour morning routine isn't really in the cards for me. What is in the cards is AG1. It's a fast way to get vitamins and minerals I need to perform. I first gave AG1 a try because I wanted a single solution that helps support my entire body by filling in nutrient gaps and simplifying my morning routine. Since drinking AG1 daily, I've always felt strong and energized and ready to attack the day. Not only does AG1 deliver my daily dose of vitamins, minerals, pre and probiotics, and more, it's a powerful, healthy habit that's also powerfully simple. It's one scoop mixed in water once a day and every day. I know that AG1 is giving my body high quality nutrition. Every batch of AG1 goes through a rigorous testing process so you know that it's safe. And AG1 ingredients are sourced for absorption, potency, and nutrition density. AG1 is a supplement that I trust to provide the support my body needs daily, and that's why I'm excited to welcome them as a new partner. 
Here is your chance to start every day this season with a gift to yourself. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase exclusively at drinkag1.com slash proven grit. That's drinkag1.com slash proven grit. Check it out. So later in the day or should it be earlier in the day, right? So it's actually better to skip dinner. Okay, well now this starts to ignore, now you have these, all these people trying to optimize something that just, it's- It doesn't matter. It's minuscule, yeah. right? And now, well, what about your quality of life? Okay, at the end of the day, what if skipping the dinner has a 1% better return from some you know, hormonal response, but, well, now you're, but the only time your family can eat together is dinner. And now you're skipping dinner, not eating. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like when the that's not going to be sustainable for most people. If their social life, family life revolves maybe around a dinner in the afternoon, but now you're skipping it for some. So you you just don't want to fall down that rabbit hole. You want to find trade offs of what's sustainable, Mm -hmm. right? So I've used this example before. Like, and there may be one percent benefit, right? If you're if you want to build max muscle to eating, say, like six meals a day, to having yeah. those protein fe- feedings every three hours. Yeah, because like, it is better to be a little more frequent with protein feeding if your goal is to gain muscle. Yeah, and yeah, I, you know, that's typically a goal of mine. But, you know, when I eat six meals a day, well, now I got to carry meals with me. Now my my life starts to revolve around eating and this food. So it's, it's a trade-off I'm willing to make. It's like, hey, I may leave some gains on the table because I only want to eat three meals a day. But it fits my lifestyle, right? Yeah. Breakfast, lunch, dinner. Most people stop for lunch. That's normal. You know, have breakfast in the morning, dinner in the afternoon. It fits kind of our societal norms. It doesn't cramp my lifestyle, yeah. right? It, I'm willing to make the trade off for 1% of diminishing returns yeah. for what is sustainable. And like your base is pretty balanced. And like what you would gain from doing the six meals mm-hmm. is not very significant. Yeah. So, and to stop you, what you just said exactly, right? So if someone's like, well, so and so said, oh, I got an intermittent fast, you know, 16 hour fast. If you're hitting your calories that you need, say, for weight loss and that's your goal, there's no benefit enough nah. to then force yourself to be like, I have to do this. And then it, for a lot of people, it's a stressor mm-hmm. of like, I got to eat in this window. And then if you don't, you're a failure. I mean, I've seen people, and even myself, when I did it, you start to develop. Almost a little eating disorder. Yeah. Because you're like, my eating window is 12 noon to 8 p.m. So to where then all of a sudden, hey, you're at work and hey, your lunch break starts and it's 1130. But you're like, I can't do it. I got to wait till exactly the clock strikes noon to eat or all my progress will it's be. It's going to mess everything up. Messed up. Right. And I'll even see people online who then they're posting, hey, if you drink coffee, does that break your fast? Hey, if you put cre- cream in your coffee, does that break? Blah, 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 blah. And it's like, dude, just have the coffee, you know, <laughs> just it, have it's it. not going to matter. It's not like it's five calories, you yeah. know, There's again, breaking the fast. There's no magic thing happening. Right. So, yeah, you start to see these happen. These things happen. And if you're that type of person, you notice those tendencies. You, hey, you might want to ease up. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's just not worth it. And then you get people that want to argue about, well, how long of a fast should you do? Mm-hmm. Right? The sixteen eight, it's actually an arbitrary thing that just had to do with how much time the researcher had, and that's yeah. why that happened. Mm-hmm. So it's not even anything magic. It's like his wife wanted him home. Yeah, that's that's it. So that's the reason they arrived on that. But then some people will say, oh, well, a six you know six hour eating window, and then there's even the the OMAD, the one mm-hmm. meal a day, mm-hmm. where it's like you just have one giant meal a day. Where at the end of the day, like cool if you want to eat one meal because you yeah. don't want to worry about and, wasting your time on other meals fine but and but then even that's new and if maybe you're dieting and you're a smaller person and you only need say 1800 calories a day and like you can make that happen in one meal but what if you're someone who works out you're bigger and you need three and a half thousand calories a day yeah like one meal a day really, like can, do you know like, how big that meal is gonna be <laughs> yeah the digestive oh well, yeah and then the stress of, stress. of eating that much food at one time mm-hmm. it's just a lot yeah it, it and again then, nuance then you have the people who fall down the rabbit holes of like, well, you, if I'm not eating, then I can burn max fat. So the more time I'm not eating, the more fat I'll burn. Look, the way our body burns fat, it's it's happens over time, and you want to think it's almost more like money, right? So you, it's about the averages and where you end up, say, over weeks, right? So 
it works the same within the day and within the week. So say, well, just for simple math, someone needs to say 2000 calories, they maintain their weight. So they need, you know, if they eat 1700 calories, they'll lose a little bit of body fat mm -hmm. over say the course of a day, right? So yes, if you have this huge time where you don't eat, your body will dip into needing to use energy reserves from stored body fat. But then say you consume all those 1800 calories in that one meal, or then say you consume 2100 calories in one meal, even though it's, and it takes you two hours to eat. So even though you spent 22 hours not eating, two hours eating, but then you end up your net your total, total for that day is 2200 calories, which, hey, for you happens to be an actual surplus, you will end up storing a little bit of extra fat at the end of, say, that 24 hours. Yes. And then you can break it up. Say you do that over a week, right? So yet, there's always these little ups and downs. Yeah, that's how our um, body works. It's not a static thing. Yeah, of like... It's not a transaction. From hour to hour, we could be storing or losing, right? So it's not this, like, clear thing. Like, I didn't eat. I burned all this fat. Like Yeah, like, fasting does not turn on the blast furnace. Mm -hmm. It's not like it just cranks it up and you're just, like, shedding fat and your yeah. body's burning through it. It's just, like, we don't work that way. Like, our body doesn't work fast or extreme for mm -hmm. reasons like it wants homeostasis yeah. it wants to stay in the middle and what matters and it fights against the change yeah. and it's a total picture you can so same thing right like um it's like it's like money you know okay you have two thousand dollars uh over the course of that week you could not spend it for six and a half days yeah right six days and 23 hours i got two thousand dollars then you could go online oh here's a uh stereo system i'm going to get and it's you know twenty one hundred dollars and you spend it right there in eight seconds and now you're in debt yeah it doesn't matter right? if it took it you it all week or one, you one hour you know all the, all the other time right so um or you could have just as easily spent money three times a day every day but it was only whatever like 30 bucks to where and it adds up and at the end of the week even though you were spending money all this time it only adds up you you spent eighteen hundred dollars. You have two. You have two hundred dollars. Whereas the other way, well, you didn't spend money the entire time, but then you went over it once, right? That's how it happens with food too. It doesn't matter. You cannot eat for twenty three hours, but then if you do eat and you go over, you're gonna end up in a net gain. Yeah. Right. Or or you do end up in a net loss. But those total times, but it, like it, it's it. The time it, doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah. So hopefully that that helps. It yeah. Quick. It, it's. It's all thinking averages, of course. Like, you know, and we have people do that um, when they, you know, track calories or track their weight. It, it's more what happens over time. You know, like mm -hmm. what was your weight across the entire week because we fluctuate? What were your calories across an entire week? You know, like some people will restrict a little heavier during the week, eat a little more on the weekend, and it averages out to whatever their target is for the week, and it works out. So, so it's more instead of like one single day burning as much fat as possible. It's what happens over weeks, months, and years in terms of how much we're eating. Yep. So yes, intermittent fasting, what it is, what it is. It's going to so plague us for is, the rest of our lives. It is a great tool in the tool box. Yes. It can help you lose weight, improve insulin sensitivity. Can. Um, yeah, vi it can be very effective. It can be a great lifestyle, sustainable approach. It, it can is, also it's be all those things. It can unsustainable. Yeah. So you know, and it also is not the main driver of these results. Yeah. Col your caloric intake, caloric restriction. That that is right. So if it helps support that you will see those benefits if it doesn't you won't and yeah. it may just then be it just may be worse for, <laughs> off for you right will lead to e eating disorders will lead to over consuming food um don't let anyone trick you that it's this magic and no all be all only thing um and 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 really then a, a lot of the reason people do like it is because of that alertness right but realize too that's a stress response that's not actually so that's like your body being like, you know, and again, some people can handle that better. It also, what's the rest of your stress in your life? Like, mm -hmm. you know, if it's and super stressful, like probably just eat a freaking breakfast because yeah. that's actually going to have some hormonal effects and mechanisms that help balance everything out. And they've, they've done research on like 
people's actual alertness and attentiveness and reaction times, all of that. And they're better when you've had food. Mm -hmm. Whether you feel alert or not, like your all of those things, your brain functions better when you've eaten. Yep. regardless of how you think you feel when you're fasted. Yeah. And that's, you know, at this point, the conclusion they've come to. So mm -hmm. if that changes, then I will gladly concede. Yeah. But and it makes sense. Now, this is just speculation from you know, you know, the people who like to use like the ev evolution and all that. Like, yeah, it would make sense that if we haven't eaten, our body starts to go into the stress mode, make, yeah, like make us feel more alert and pump adrenaline because it wants us to find. Yeah. Food. Like y there's a drive to perform to eat yeah you know like you don't want to be sluggish when you're you know starving right. but and i'll say this though if you've been hey you have gotten in a fat loss phase and lost weight when you're in that true calorie deficit losing weight and as you if you get into very lean body fats that drive is there trust me whether mm -hmm. you're intermittent fasting mm -hmm. or not like yep. you can be eating six meals a day basically every three hours but if you're truly only eating x amount of calories your body fat's down to nine percent like you know, like you, like there's a drive. The, uh, you know, all that stuff's still going to be there, and yes. that's just as stressful, right? And yeah. just as so, again, um, these things are like super nuanced, mm -hmm. right? And, and really, you probably don't want to depend on them. No, nope. if, if you're depending on intermittent fasting for energy, to well, then you need to look at like, well, what's really what's what's going on with your sleep, like what's you know, these other factors. What's your stress management like? As far as long-term, like that's a short-term Band-Aid fix. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and then you ever notice, you ever notice how people who do a ton of intermittent fasting also have to have tons of caffeine? I was going to say that, yeah. You know, it's like, well, is it the intermittent fasting keeping you going or is it the dependency on caffeine? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. You know? So, um yeah, let me, let's let's see you do it without without caffeine. Yeah, do it right? without caffeine and see what happens. Um, see if yeah. you're alert and yeah. So there it is, intermittent fasting, what it is and what it isn't. I feel like we're gonna do another one. I know <laughs> it's you know it's fine. I don't mind. I'll, well, I'll repeat it ad nauseum. One cool, you know, as we get new people in our audience, right? They may not hear other stuff mm -hmm. or have listened to it or, or heard, you know, because sometimes we'll talk about it a lot within the context of other yeah. things. So. Um, but yeah, th there it is. Bright and shiny, ready for you. Intermittent, Intermittent fasting. It's good. One day. It's good. It might not be. Might not be good for you. Try it. We'll always encourage people to try things. I'll say this in general, working with gin pop people across the board, weight loss, you know, they want to lose weight. No, no major extreme performance goals. What, if we get an extreme performance goals, then it's definitely probably like no, it's not don't the do option. This. Um, but in general, I would not start most people with any of the popular. I wouldn't either. Intermittent fasting methods. Nah. Um, we, we found in general a good starting point is like three meals a day, kind of equally spread out, like breakfast, lunch, dinner, and then, uh, and then from deviate there, from there depending yeah. on schedule and and preference and things like that. So, and then another one too, just observational. See, we're working with clients in the real world. Men do better than women. We've mm -hmm. had a lot of successful guy clients lose weight two meals a day, intermittent fasting. You know, basically like a lunch and dinner. Um, women, it's a hormonal things seem to make it go awry a little little more. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, yeah. So those are some things to keep in mind too, uh, as far as hey, is this a good method for me? Because yeah. like I said, we're not discouraging it. No, um, it's just not <clears throat> the messiah. It's not magic. Yeah, it can be a good thing for people to try. All right, Word. Th thanks for listening. Hit us up. We appreciate the feedback. Yeah, if, any, if you guys have any questions, please ask, All and right. we'll address them. See ya. Catch you next time. As always, thanks for listening, guys. If you want to learn more, check us out at CoastalFitnessVA.com or GaryDeagle.com. We'll see you next time.